This is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to give Him praise. Come on, you can stand if you want to. We got an easy worship song. We're gonna do this together. Come on, clap your hands like this, everybody. Come on. God of all the earth, God of all the earth, you are Lord of Lords. You are Lord of all. Great Jesus, Savior.
be over your life. Bless him in this place. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. We give him glory for all things. So open your minds and your heart and let's give him the praise that he's worthy of. Give him the praise that he's worthy of. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise that he's worthy of. He's been good. In the middle of this pandemic, we're still here. for all of your many blessings. We humble ourselves before you, God, and we claim you to be Lord of Lord and King of Kings. You are our Savior. Lord, we thank you so much. Lord God, we pray that you would reign with us and receive our worship that we give to you in spirit and in truth. We pray that you would bless your preached word that it would go forth, Lord God, with power to bend broken hearts and save lost souls. Lord, for this and all blessings, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Good morning and shalom. My name is Jason Posley, and our scripture reading today can be found in the first number of Psalms. That's again Psalms 1. I will be reading from the New International Version this morning. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. 
He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither wherever he does prosper. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This concludes our reading for this morning. This is the word of God. I do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers may fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. 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 Shalom. This morning I come to tell you many people might fail you, but I know someone that will not. God never fails. Join in with us as we see. God never fails.
Amen. It is good news to know that we serve a God that never fails. Thank you, God, for your hymns of the church that ministers to our heart and our soul. Amen. Church, it is our prayer time, but before we go into prayer, we want to acknowledge our scripture reader for this morning was Jason Posley. He's one of our recent graduates. Jason. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Jason is a recent graduate of Maryville University where he's earned his BS in health science. Amen. And not only that, but Jason is currently studying at Webster University for a master's in health administration. Already. <laughs> yes. Now, Jason's goal is to be the director of diversity and equity for a hospital. We celebrate you, Jason, and thank God for all your achievements. Amen. Give God, give, give Jason some applause. Amen. Bless the Lord. We also want to continue to lift up and express congratulations to all our graduates of this year 20, for the year 2021. Amen. 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 Now, our prayer, it is our prayer time. And the Bible says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And out of all the requests that come in, our leaders are faithful to present those requests to our God, who's able to do everything that we need to hear and answer our prayers. And we want to lift up those families that are in bereavement. Latrita Westfall, Westfall funeralized her grandmother, Inez Smith of Chicago, Illinois, and Deacon Tony Williams funeralized his brother, Kevin Williams of Little Rock, Arkansas. Our prayers are with you, and we want to always keep in prayer our, our pastor, his family, his wife, and his entire family, and the entire Shalom Church family. Now lastly, if you're worshiping with us today, and you don't know this God that we serve, this God who never fails, we invite you to join with us today and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Simple as that. So we invite you to accept Jesus after proclamation that you would accept Jesus into your heart. Or maybe you've accepted Jesus, but you're in search of a church home. We invite you to join us here at Shalom Church City of Peace under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, where you will be nurtured in the faith. Now our contact information is on the screen. We pray that you would give us a call that we may celebrate with you in your decision. Bless you and God be praised. Now the choir is gonna give us a song to open our hearts up for prayer. And afterwards, we will go to God in prayer. Amen.
Hallelujah. We thank God that he's still working miracles. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that he's still working miracles? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just honor him right here for working the miracle. Whatever it is in your life, we thank him for working it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go before God in prayer. Father God, we just say thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning and clothing us in our right mind, oh God. And even if we forgot when we woke up this morning to say thank you, we're going to take this time now to say, God, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done, God. And thank you for all that you are going to do, oh God. And God, we thank you for still working miracles. And God, we thank you for being a healer. We thank you for being a loving God. We thank you for being a forgiving God. We thank you for being a faithful God. Even when we don't have nobody else, oh God. God, we can call you at any time. Hallelujah. Because you're always there whenever we need you, oh God. Whenever we feel a void, oh God. God, you fill us up, oh God. And we say thank you. God, we say a special prayer over our pastor, oh God. As he bring the word this morning, let it rejuvenate somebody, oh God. Let it save somebody that's lost, oh God. God, give him strength to go before your people, oh God. God, send a fresh wind. We thank you right now, even now, for your presence in here, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for your presence being known, oh God. Thank you, oh God. And God, now we ask that you touch anybody that may be going through and experiencing death this morning, oh God, for you are a mender of broken hearts, oh God. Oh God, mend the heart, oh God. Even when they feel like they have nobody to turn to, oh God, we glad we have you, oh God. We thank you now. Touch each family that is represented on this morning. Touch each family that is on the live stream, oh God. God, meet the need in this place, oh God. Ah, meet the need right now, oh God, whatever it might be, oh God. Whether it be financial breakthrough, whether it be a healing that is needed, oh God. Touch each person in the name of Jesus. And we will be careful to give your name the glory. We will be careful to give your name the honor, oh God. And we love you, oh, today. We love you, oh, today, oh God. We love you, oh, today, oh God. For you are a God that never fails. Oh God, you are a God that never fails. And you never forgot about us, oh God. And we thank you even now. Despite how we may feel, we will say thank you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. Hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. For God, you have the final say on whatever it is, oh God. Meet the need, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, save the soul that is lost on today, oh God. Let a song that is sung save that soul. Let the word that is going forth today save that soul, oh God. God, we need you now like never before. God, we need you now like never before. The world may be, the world may fail us, but God, you won't. And your word will never fail us, oh God. And we thank you. We thank you. And as we seal this prayer before we do, we decree and declare that all is well. God, all is well. God, all is well. It's weller than ever before, God. All is well. Whatever your all is, all is well. All is well and well indeed. And this we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. We do pray. Thank God and amen.
and strength He promised to keep me Never to leave me He'll never, never fall Short of His word I've got to fast and pray Say
a joy it is to be a part of this worship experience on today. God is faithful and we love him because he first loved us. And when we start to consider how faithful God has been uh, and how faithful God remains, uh, we move into that space of praise without any shame, without any shame. This has been a great morning. This has been a great morning. The, I, uh, I have not, nor will I uh, ever take for granted the music ministry as well as any other ministry in the life of our Church, thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, on today as well as uh, doing the uh, days when we were searching for direction and praying for God's uh, uh, help in every aspect, navigating through uh, the dark and difficult days of the uh, pandemic. And so thank you, thank you so much. Blessings upon persons who are with us by way of live stream. Uh, I ask God that uh, he would grant those that do not know him ears to hear today. And as the Holy Spirit moves uh, upon you that you would accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, give us a call. That number is, um, they'll put it up. Uh, uh, um, call that number. <laughs> call that number. We'll be grateful. I want to invite your attention to the uh, book of Acts chapter 10. Chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, can Anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they may be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Breaking down barriers, building human bridges. Breaking, breaking down barriers, building human bridges. After the stoning of Stephen, the persecution that the church experienced scattered them throughout Judea and Samaria. Those who were scattered preached the word of God wherever they went. Philip baptized a Ethiopian eunuch. Saul had a conversion experience on the Damascus Road, and Peter had a community growing vision where God led him to witness to the, Gen to the Gentile Cornelius, and after their exchange, started a turning point in the expansion 
of the mission of the church. We hear Peter saying in verse 34, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what's right. Now, for that first century Jewish reader hearing Peter say this really would have been considered something close to blasphemy. Because when we read Exodus 19, 5b, it becomes easier to see how a people can get locked in on a certain mentality that it says, then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And it now appears that as Peter has spoken, that God has expanded this right of kingdom, priest, holy nation, not to just a few, but to all who fear him. In essence, those who fear him have a right to access this God who is found in Jesus Christ. So the common and unclean that Peter struggles with in the vision that he had at the beginning of the chapter really did not refer to food, but to people who shall now be included and have a seat at the table. that this passage is about the expansion of the gospel of Jesus Christ beyond Jerusalem. And it is interesting that Jesus instructs his disciples, uh, brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 10, there may be other places, but Matthew chapter 10, verse 6, uh, he instructs them to go to the lost sheep of Israel to avoid the Gentiles. But now we have this e expanded vision of, of inclusion and that of diversity as it relates to the kingdom of God. And so I have a need to just kind of do a drive-by on what a Jew and Gentile is. That the, the Jews are anyone who belongs to one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then a Gentile is everyone else. I, I told you it was going to be a drive-by, yeah. That at the center of Jewish culture was the Hebrew Bible and the writings of rabbis, and Jews believed in one transcendent God who created the universe and everything in it. They also believed that they were God's chosen people. The Gentiles or the Hellenistic culture was more free fall. Um, the Greek and Roman morality and philosophy and mythology and politics all of that was a work in process. It was still evolving. And then Peter makes this bold declaration 
that God shows no favoritism, that God shows no unfair preferential treatment to persons or groups. That's, that's really good news today, that we can count on God being just. We can count on God uh, not showing favoritism, but having favor. And favor is not being free from responsibility. And in fact, it may mean that, that one has to really move in the space not to prove that God has made a mistake and find in favor, but that we are overwhelmed with the mercy and grace and trying to understand why. Long before anybody else can point to say, I don't know why God favors her or him. They, they've got to know that they late with that question. That we've asked that question long before any of our friends or enemies have asked that question. Because we don't know either why God has demonstrated favor in our lives. Is it anybody present or anybody looking on that thinks you deserve the favor of God? That God should have favored you because you do X, Y, Z, LMNOP in your own mind extremely well. Or it could be, and I'm not trying to provide an answer for God because God is free. He does whatever he wants to do and he blesses whomever he wants to bless. But none of us can ever answer the question of why God has blessed us like he has when we know that we are so undeserving. <laughs> Speaks to the freedom of God. Have you ever encountered persons who understand that your life is favored and they try to go against the favor that God has placed on your life and they discover because God has favored you to go against what God has done is to block their own blessing. They become, they become an untouchable. Those persons that God has favored their life and we don't know why and they don't either but when that spirit of jealousy creeps in on us and we try to dishonor what God has honored, then what we cause is trouble in our own life. And so what God has favored, we, we might do ourselves good to leave that alone. Hey Amen, you preaching preacher. God knows and shows no favoritism, but God has demonstrated favor. And for those persons who are the recipients of that favor, find ourselves wondering, God, why? And it would be something if it, if it were a, a works kind of thing. <laughs> That, that if we could point to something and say, well, I work toward this favor. Yeah. That my resume demonstrates why God has favored me. Only to really look and analyze it and then discover 
that uh, I'm embarrassed to put my resume, my Christian resume out before anybody because all of the arrows point to the reasons why God should not have. Yeah, see, if I stayed here, all of my time would be uh, ate up with just this favor part because you can't figure it out. Yeah, you, and then some people have the audacity to ask God for favor. Uh, uh, I, and I wonder, I wonder at what year that prayer is going to leave the building. And thank God it got stuck in the ceiling. And so I was, I was thinking about this thing of favor and the uh, attitudes of superiority that persons have. And I come to realize that our world is torn because some think that they are better than others. That, that our perceptions keep us from seeing reality. I was thinking about how uh, in this last election cycle, 161 million people voted. And for some people, that was too many people who, who, who voted. And, and there were those who are part of communities that are considered the urban core uh, that voted, that voted in swing states. Yeah, Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. And after the election, because so many people in the urban core voted, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about black people. That so many black people voted. Uh, others said something must be wrong with that system. And so over the last several months after the election and after the big lie, they have gathered into these uh, election huddles across uh, the nation, certainly in what you call the swing states, to come up with ways to keep people in the urban core from voting. And the sophisticated name for it is voter suppression. Now, how can I keep you, a taxpaying citizen of the United States of America, from voting. How is it that all of a sudden, because I start to understand the necessity of voting, then you deem it necessary to make it hard for me. Make it hard for me to vote. And so I want to encourage everybody that's, that's looking on and listening I don't care, I don't care how difficult others try to make it hard to vote. That you need to understand black people. When black people make up their mind, they're going to do something. Huh? No, that, that, that not a, that not a hoop you can come up with, that little Thetford that will keep black folk from doing what black folk want to do. So between now and the next election, I guarantee you that uh, somebody's going to be creative enough to say that uh, if I can't get out of line to use the restroom, then uh, what size? Uh, They got some stuff you can buy at the store. What sizes do they come in? You feel me? Yeah. 
Uh, also, also, you, you and I both know that racism is a part of American history. And as a part of American history, racism needs to be taught in school. That some history department, some uh, humanities department need to teach that racism is a part of the fabric of American history. Hallelujah. Yeah, that, it, that if you can teach Columbus discovered America, then there are some other things that you can teach too about what he discovered about black enslaved people. Yeah, the genocide of native people. And so there have been these great big, uh, 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 big racial divides, racial fights about curriculum. And you, you, you know they said, now you can teach Martin King, and you can teach <laughs> Rosa Parks. But I don't know how you can teach Martin King and Rosa Parks and the situation that they found themselves in without talking about segregation and, and racism. That uh, Rosa Parks gave up, her, did not give up her seat. Why? Martin Luther King was in Memphis and was assassinated why? And I think that why is going to lead you to have to deal with structural, historical racism in America. There's no way around it. You know, you, you know so we've been talking, they've been in the, 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 the big lie, the big lie. But, but that's just the latest big lie, the one that, that, uh, this election was not won by Joe Biden. That's not, that's, that, that's, that, there, there's a, there's this ongoing lie that, that needs to be told. It's a lie. And it needs to be taught in, in our school system. That if we ever going to cure ourselves of this disease of racism, it's got to be taught that no group of people is better than the other. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I would figure that you, that you do yourselves well to go on and teach it, teach it because we have this thing now called the internet. That if you, if you really want to find out stuff, you just Google it. You, you just look it up. You know, and there's Henry Louis Gates' Many Rivers to Cross, his documentary series on the historical nature of racism in America. There's the 1619 Project. That information has been made available. And then historians have had have tried to come out against Miss Jones to say that she is not factual. Well, let's have that debate. Let's take that debate to the classroom so that everybody can learn what this thing is really about. Because if you don't, you continue the big lie and the separations of people. And we can uh, look around and say that we are diverse, but that is, that's really just a starting point because di diversity does not mean inclusion. That just because you in the room don't mean you in the circle. And there are a lot of people who are just glad to be in the room. But because you in the room don't mean you at the table. 
that we can make progress if we move past this thing of diversity and start focusing in on what it means to be included. <laughs> Building walls to keep immigrants out. This is so fascinating that people who are immigrants in this country are now building walls to keep immigrants out. I'm almost done. That those who came to America as immigrants are now demonizing others who were trying to come to America just like they did for a better life. And at some level, it's the same kind of ordeal that happens with black people. Black people who make it. And then they look around at other black people who are trying to make it, but they don't want to associate with them uh, because they have found comfort with being with others who are like themselves who are in the category of we made it. But I just want to testify on the day to let you know, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil fool you. Unless your brother and our sister has made it, none of us have made it. That believe it or not, we are still in this together. And, and if one or two or three or four of our people have crossed the finish line, you haven't finished, you still got work to do. Yeah, you need to look back and start to recognize all of the people who've helped you along the way, all of those whose shoulders you've been standing on. And if you can remember that, then it will cause you to look back and start to help somebody else. So, I've, I've never been more hesitant than I am these days to, to use this term, I'm a Christian, because that's loaded. I'm almost through. I know this is boring you. That, and so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to get it right. I'm trying to be a Christian. I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet, I'm, I, but I'm trying, I'm trying. You see, to say that you're a Christian uh, 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 chief is to, is to say that you're like Christ. And to say you're a Christian, people start looking for something. Not, not something against you, but something that would model what Christ would do, what Christ would say how Christ would operate in certain situations. And when we say we are Christian and we're not at a place and point where we love and include and respect and forgive other people for what we say they've done to us, then perhaps we, we might need to say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian in training. Until we learn how to respect another person and dignify their humanity and not get caught up in the arguments that try to disqualify a person's humanity or their sexuality or any of those issues that are cultural issues that would swing you in a place where it's really not even your argument. Preach pastor and so in our in our being uh, yet in class students disciples of Jesus Christ it is ours to try to love everybody and when it comes to talking about people like we normally do behind their back you ought to ask God help me hold my peace that if I can't say nothing good about the person, don't let me say nothing at all. 
Because I hope you know that in that circle where everybody talking about everybody, they just waiting on you to leave. Now, don't you dare think that you're going to talk about everybody else and then you leave the circle and they not talk about you. No, you got that coming. <laughs> uh, and so you know my thing is hospitality hospitality uh, and one of the biggest things I think we need to realize is, is that, that when we are hospitable to strangers it, it's a way that we are paying it forward because we know where we've been but we don't know where we're going. And all of us, as well known as we all are, and all of us like to think that we are the main thing in the room, all of us have that disease. Yet that the party can't get started until we get there. And as important as we are, now moments in our life where we find ourselves in strange places, where we are the stranger in need for somebody to be hospitable to us. But if we've never been a demonstration of hospitality, how can we draw from that which we've not given to? And so if we've always been inconsiderate and disrespectful of the other, if we never honored another person's dignity, if we've always found ourselves condescending as it relates to somebody else, don't be caught off guard when you get some of that back. And, and so in this text, I need five more minutes. In this text, all of that is honored. That, that here is Cornelius, who is a Gentile, who sends uh, for this Jewish preacher to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and they're all in the house. And Cornelius and his gang are in the house because they want to hear one thing. They want to hear this preacher preach. You know, uh, uh, during this pandemic season, um, there was a whole lot of Sundays where I stood here and wasn't nobody in the house. I knew you all were, were looking in, but you wasn't in the house. And so my soul kind of longed for somebody to just say, go ahead or something. You know, you know how we do in our tradition. Yeah, and, and, and it didn't have that. But it gave me a broader sense of what the, what the church is. A lot of people think that the church is the building. And the church is not the building. The church is the people. And if you... And if the people are not coming together to sing God's praises and to proclaim his goodness as Myrna did earlier today, she got caught on fire early. And I was loving all of that. Yeah, and, and to hear the gospel preached, then, then it leaves us with a sense of emptiness. That, that the building is not the church. The church is the people. And, and the people are created in the image of God, in his likeness. And we come together and oh, what a fellowship. That's what I miss. I miss the fellowship. I miss seeing people. I miss, miss talking to people because that's the church. That's the church. Ain't got nothing to do with how many. You know, a lot of people go on this tangent about I got so many. And, and that's good if you do. But I heard Jesus say, well, two or three gather. Yeah. I'm in the midst and they gathered in, in Cornelius' house because they wanted to hear 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and Peter, Peter preached, brothers and sisters, he preached a full gospel message. The complete message. I'm not talking about a movement. He preached a full gospel message. And they were waiting to hear uh, what he had to say about God's word. They anticipated while they were in the house. Oh, they preaching, getting ready to happen. Yeah, they weren't looking for no political dialogue. They weren't looking for no philosophical debate. They weren't in need of no speculation or theories. They didn't want to be entertained. They didn't want the preacher to try to impress them. And I think that day is over anyhow. Once upon a time when the preacher could uh, be impressive, it's because the pew didn't have intellect. And there's some preachers who still think that the pew doesn't have any intellect. But you got people in the pew and people who are streaming with you that got more education, got more degrees than you got. And so while you trying to stir and impress, they wondering, uh, is he ill? Is she, is she sick? It did, something, it did something happen? Yeah, why, why, why is she trying to stir uh, and get emotional when there's nothing wrong with my hearing? I came to hear a word. Not any foolishness. Yeah. Zedekiah wanted to know from Jeremiah, is there a word from the Lord? Cornelius wanted to know from Peter, is there a word from the Lord? Not looking for no guesswork, not looking for hearsay. I'm not wanting a theological puzzle. Yeah, don't want any arguments. Hallelujah, I don't want stones. I want bread. Is that word from the Lord? For the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words that he says. I'll draw. I feel something pushing me up in here. I'll draw all men under me. Hallelujah. And while Peter was preaching. Church, don't miss this. While Peter was preaching, the, the Holy Spirit uh, fell in that house. He wasn't through preaching. While he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell in the house. Yeah, so when we start talking about after the sermon, except Jesus Christ, I think that they're wrong. Uh, I think when when the Holy Spirit show up, whether the preacher is through or not, and it's time for you to accept Jesus Christ, that's your time to accept him. And while Peter was still preaching, the Holy Ghost fell in the house and it started moving on all of them. Yeah, and they started to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. You ought to go on and read that. And, and, and those that was with Peter, who were part of the original segregation group, saw that the same thing that happened in Acts 2 is now happening in Acts 10, just with a different group of people. These are not Jews, these are Gentiles. And the same God that poured out his spirit on the Jews is now pouring out his spirit on the Gentiles. And they started acting just like the Jews did on the day of Pentecost. So on the day of Pentecost, we call that the birth date of the church. Yeah. 
on this day, because you know they had a party. It looked like they was having a party in Acts 2, because somebody said, you know, are they drunk? Look like they, they uh, started early. And they were having a party, but, but that was just a select few that was invited to that party. In Acts 10, this ain't no house party. This is a block party. And God has poured out his spirit. Listen, I, I, I got to get out of your way, but please don't matter. And it couldn't be controlled. Not by that liturgy, not by his preaching, not by those that was with him that was trying to say, get a hold of yourself. You know how we do when we are overcome with the presence of God and people around us want us to be quiet uh, because they say we are interrupting them. And... They fail to understand that we've been interrupted by the Holy Spirit, that there's been a, a, a break in for our breakthrough, and we can't hardly control ourselves. Anybody ever been there? Where well, the Lord steps in on you, and all of a sudden there's a quickening in your body. And, and you try hard to respect your neighbor, but you're overcome with the presence of God. Now, he don't just leave because somebody gets uncomfortable about how he's operating in your life at the time. He lingers. He stay there until clapping starts in your hand and shouting gets in your feet. And you throw back your head and you holler as loud as you can. I wonder, is it anybody in the house today that when you start to think about how good God has been to you, you want to respect the people around you, but you overcome with this sense of hallelujah. You are, you are overcome with the feeling of thank you, Jesus. Is it anybody here feel like opening your mouth, throwing back your head and telling God, thank you. Thank you for waking me, waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. And I got to get out of your way. But the Bible says that there was praise in that house. Hallelujah. That there was praise in that house. And I want to ask you this morning, is it praise in your house? That when the Lord will get up this morning, was that praise in your house when he started you on your way and you found yourself in your automobile on your way to the temple? Was that praise in that car? And those that are in this house right here, right now, Ought to be some praise in this house. When I think about how good God has been to me, I can't help it but praise His name. Thank you, Father, for being so good. Thank you, Father, for being so kind. Thank you, God, while the blood is running warm in our veins. And we have another chance to praise your high name. 
I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if you're not too mean wherever you are. If you can't throw up your hands and then open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you for seeing me through danger seen and unseen. Thank you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know who holds tomorrow. Thank you for holding my tomorrow. Thank you for a roof over our heads. Thank you for clothes on our back. Is it anybody here? No, my Jesus. Is it anybody here? Tried my Jesus. If you tried him, gotta know he's all right. Ain't God all right? Do me this one thing. I know some of you had your shots and you're doing all right. Praise the Lord. Why don't you for five seconds remove your mask? Hold it in your hand because you're going to put it right back on. And fill this room with a great big thank you, Jill. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. put them back on in just a few minutes you go yeah then just for another five seconds for another five seconds hey. Hey. Shalom family. I am Vicki Edwards and this is my sister Betty Calvert. And we are so honored to share with you the importance of remaining faithful stewards to our church. Staying connected to our church family, especially during this season of pandemic. As you know, although our services are still limited to virtual worship, which has been a tremendous blessing, our tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts are still essential for the upkeep and the furtherance of uh, how we continue to do ministry. We just want to encourage you not to grow weary in being good stewards over what God has placed in your hands. There are four ways to continue your giving. Online, the website, text, mail it in, 
and you may certainly bring your gifts to the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lastly, continue to stay connected to our church family through your prayers and by virtually worshiping together. We live stream Sunday starting at 8 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We love all of you and we miss you so much. Shalom. Shalom.